What's up, what's up? Another chapter of T Bait is out. 417. These chapters be coming out really quick, or at least the time just kind of be passing by super fast. Man, so last chapter 416, we found out that Arthur he got to the third ruin, but the insight, the artifact, it was already given to someone else. Now, you know, we're speculating like who was it given to? It makes sense to me that it that one of the ascenders went down there and they passed it, but I'm just kind of like, how how was someone gonna be able to get there without actually being able to utilize ether to like break the like illusion that was there, right? Um, I'm not really sure, but I mean, it makes sense if a Grona has it because he said that he gave it a long, long time ago, right? So, anyways, that was happened last time, and so he has to go to the fourth ruin and try to get there, and hopefully, you know, um, that hasn't been taken or that hasn't been um, given to someone else yet. But uh, I'm not sure if we're going to continue off of there, if we're going to go anywhere else. I'm excited to kind of see where it's going to be heading. Let's just get into the chapter because, I mean, it's no time to waste. All right, 417, one of my, one of my. That's an interesting name, one of mine. I'm not sure what that means. But it looks like Kara, Kara Denora is starting this off. So let's see what she has to say. Let's see if she knows about what happened with uh, um, Aller, uh, Alaric and, you know, with him getting captured, but then Malus being there because we know that Malus is a uh, richer blooded, but she doesn't know that Kara is richer blooded because they have a history. So let's just see if uh, what Kara has to say about this. Okay, so, all right. Our base of operations, and I do not know how to say this word, San Derene, lacked all the charm and beauty of Ceres Villa in Edelgard. Adel Ceres had commanded one of the sovereign's research facilities for us to use as a command center. And there was something about the sterile functional building that left me feeling chilled all the time. But nothing but cold metal and even colder white light everywhere one looked. That's interesting. The graded floor rang with a somber, impersonal tone as I marched down the hall towards the central meeting chamber where we held our daily conferences. The door cold metal like almost everywhere else sensed my mana signature as I approached and slid open with a dull grinding noise. The inside of the meeting room was no better. The central table looked more like a laboratory counter than anything else, and the chairs surrounding it were purposefully uncomfortable. Crystal viewing panels lined one wall, the primary broadcast from Central Dominion played in the middle screen while the smaller displays to the left and right showed a number of locations i recognized the battery chamber and sovereign's um orlaf's holding cell okay so he has so he's in a holding cell in adelgard um wait no it's not adelgard it's in san derene or whatever um so let's see so she recognized the battery chamber and Sovereign or Orla's holding cell in one chamber and a moving panoramic of the city of Rosire, Rosare. I really need to learn how to pronounce these fucking names on another. You're early. You're out of bed, I answered, turning to find Cyrus. Cyrus is still alive! Okay. Uh, sitting on a bench against the wall to my left his head resting back against the wall you shouldn't be he rubbed one hand down the side of his pale gray cheek scratching at the stubble growing there if i lie in bed any longer i may actually die i roll my eyes all men truly are babies aren't they even retainers his brows rose very slightly she shouldn't be talking to uh cyrus like that man cyrus to come in and, and 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 whip her into shape smack her up real quick but anyway um, oh, I don't know about that. I think I've covered fairly well. Oh, well, I think I've recovered fairly well considering my core was nearly shattered by the legacy. So what does that mean, nearly shattered? Does that mean that his core was damaged? Or was it like, are there cracks in his core? And maybe 
Ceres was either able to repair it, so it was like almost shattered, but not like, but maybe it was like cracked or something. I don't know. I wonder what he means by almost shattered. Um, so Cyrus and I both turned towards the door on the opposite wall of the room, sensing a powerful mana signature approaching. The door slid aside. Is it, uh, is it, is it, is it Ceres? The door slid aside with the same quiet grating noise. And Ceres, Ceres is here. Ceres stepped into the room. Ceres eased up from his bench to bow, and I followed suit. Ceres waved her. It's so crazy to me to think about, like, just the level of respect that she has in comparison with Arthur. Like, she would never bow or any, any of this shit to Arthur. But Arthur is a lot more powerful than Ceres. And so, I mean, a lot more. Yeah, I'll probably say a lot more. And so he doesn't get that same level of respect, though. Oh, no, that's cool, though. Cyrus is in the building. Um, okay, Cyrus waved our greeting away. Cyrus, I have no use for a retainer who can't follow orders. You are to maintain, or you are to remain at rest until our healers are satisfied that your core has suffered no lasting damage. I looked very closely at the side, trying to read her expression, tone, and body language. Our conflict with the High Sovereign and his forces had not been going as well as we might have hoped, and I felt certain the stress of our recent losses must have weighed on Sarah's, but she gave no outward sign at all. Forgive my impudence, Cyrus, uh, uh, Scythe Sarah's, Cyrus said, sinking back down on the bench. But Dr. Zanis, uh, these fucking names, uh, Zanis, like like Zanny, so we'll call her Zanis, did release me not 30 minutes ago. Sarah's walked around the table to stand in front of the screens, staying just outside the range of the telepathic field. The broadcast was showing a long line of men and women being paraded past the recording artifact in chains with metal gags clamped around their mouth. Name Blood Akula of the Trasia. Trusia, something like that. The cooler blood had been part of the smuggling operation out of Trusia, uh, moving both silver from their mines and ornaments brought up from Vecker. No one from their blood was assigned to the shipment we lost, Sorry said, watching the screen with a sour expression. It's possible they slipped up, but it's equally possible someone gave them up. I believe someone gave them up. It just makes more sense because... It, it, it's so many different schemes going on. So many people have their own self-interest. These people who are high bloods are extremely selfish. So I would say somebody probably gave them up. That makes more sense. Um, I remained quiet, acknowledging the guilt I felt without wallowing in it. She feel guilty? Why does she feel guilty? Uh, the Akula blood. I don't remember that being one of the bloods that she met during that meeting that Sarah's had wanted her to do, right? So I'm not sure what she's feeling guilty about. Um, I've been the one who brought the cooler blood into this. So maybe that was one of the bloods that was during the meeting. In a way, I was responsible for what was happening to them now. But I couldn't shoulder that blame personally. This was a war. There would be suffering and loss on both sides. Still, when the youngest member of the cooler blood, a girl no older than 11 was marched past the recording artifact with tears streaming down her bright red cheeks. I had to look away. But Sarah's watched, holding a silent vigil for them all, knowing they will be executed. Man, so they were literally broadcasting, unless it's only from the artifact that they're using that they're able to see all this. But they probably are still broadcasting. Bro so they can, like, fears, fear intimidate people into either giving them up telling them what they might know or just kind of betraying them in general or maybe just using them as an example of what happens when you disobey or something like that right or when you side with the traitors even when the others started to arrive in twos and threes then larger numbers until the room was full to bursting with analysts operators and viewers and commanders she kept her eyes on the broadcast the chatter that will pick up with each new arrival as people acknowledge each other with quick greets died quickly. 
Only when everyone had arrived did Sarah turn her back on the broadcast. Behind her, the rest of us watched as carts carrying the prisoners rolled away from the recording artifact. Well, it seems like, I guess, that's that's over. They literally killed them and put them in carts, and it just rolled away. So, that's, uh, that's fucked up. Reports. In the instant of hesitation that followed, I stepped in. Malus, Matron Tremble uh, has reached out and confirmed that our high value asset in uh, Oromor, 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 man, I wish I know how to pronounce these, um, have been successfully relocated. High value asset, assets in the assets. Okay, it could be people, it could be things. Um, all eyes turn to me. Some, some weird, some weary, others hopeful. It was very close, and we lost multiple mages in conflict with Retainer Moir. Yeah, 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 that's the chick that I was fighting, and yeah, that ended up murking the other one. Yeah, okay, gotcha, I, I know. Uh, but so far, it appears the identities of those present have not been compromised, so that's good. The High Siren's forces are getting more aggressive. One of our field commanders said, and not just against us. They're using violence against the people to turn public opinion against our efforts. Yeah, so this is a psychological game. So they are using force to intimidate people. And so like I said earlier, to have them be afraid of what will happen when they disobey, when they uh, when they rebel. You know, like like Sarah said, it's a revolution. So when you rebel, they're using them as an example of like, this is what happens to you. Because you're not strong enough to, to 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 win this war, right? But um, anyway, we believe they're tracking inter dominion travel, at least among high bloods. An engineer from the high blood, Redwater, put it. How? Asked someone else. I didn't catch who in the packed conference room. Not sure yet. The engineer admitted. But we've seen enough reactive movement. Or we yeah, we should have a uh, reactive movement to high value assets maneuvering that we're confident they are. There was some mumbling at this proclamation, but it died out after only a few seconds. Are our plans for the next assault on the shield in place? The next assault on the, so on the shield. So what, like being able to defend the assault on the shield? Is that what they're talking about? Scanning the room for the several people involved in that project. An imbuer from High Blood Ainsworth cleared her throat. Despite his recent setback, our High Blood would do its part. I received a message from the High Lord just this morning confirming our commitment to your plan. To your plan. The imbuer's halting cadence, right? Yeah, the halting cadence suggested she wasn't exactly thrilled about what Sarah's had asked him to do. But then... I was rather surprised they'd agreed to go forward with it at all, especially after Hector nearly lost his life to Moir. He was a prideful man. However, such close calls tended to either break a person's will or... Is this buttress it? I think that's buttress. Clearly, he was one of the latter. The necessary alterations to the estate have been made, another engineer added. Testing the wider connectivity is difficult. So they, are they trying to make this shield wider? Like it's already covering a dominion. Like, can it really be expanded even further than that? Um, it's difficult, of course. But if High Blood aims where it follows through, we're confident in our work. Then Bureau left her chin or lifted her chin and looked down her nose at the engineer. We'll do our part, even if it leads us to the same fate as as the Akula blood, apparently. Despite the growing tension, the conversation changed course, honing in on a number of technical details that were outside of the scope of my role, and though I did my best to stay invested, many of the finer points escaped me. One of the doors slid open. Many sets of eyes turned to the late arrival, but the fo- who is coming? The late arrival? The late arrival? Is it, I don't know, another scythe? I don't know. But the follow, the, well, the flow of the conversation didn't stop. Wolf, Wolfram, of high blood red water froze under so many gazes looking like a startled uh man it's so many words i don't know um rockavid as he searched the room when he saw me some of the tension left him 
and he followed the wall to where I was standing. We exchanged silent nods, then both turned our attention back to the conversation, which was finally shifting away from the previous topic. There have been five recorded dis- uh, dissensions yeah, within the shield over the last week. The head of the Ascenders Association in Edelgard said Anvalid Anvald and yeah, Anvald of the name blood Torpor was a bald man with broad shoulders and a severe and a yeah, severe look. Sixteen ascenders in total. All were interviewed, logged, and released beyond the shield in Rosire. Rosire. Yeah, I think that's how you said. Um, none were operating with the expression with the express purpose of reaching Sesclar. The few dissension portals in the western half of Sesclar were kept under heavy guard. Ceres had been monitoring traffic out of them since even before the shield went up, and we continue to do so now to make sure the Agrona wasn't actively trying to get agents into the Dominion. It was possible to destroy the portals, of course, but Sarah said that until they had proof that Agrona could weaponize them against us, she wasn't willing to break anything she couldn't rebuild. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. You know, you don't want to, I mean, that's valuable. So why risk destroying it when you don't have to? Um, after everything I had seen with, while adventuring with Gray, I felt confident a handful of dissension portals weren't going to matter to the Relic Tomb's future. But I hadn't, you know, because he can make his own fucking portal <laughs> with his artifact. But I hadn't argued the point. It was nearly impossible to target a specific dissension portal outside of the second level anyway. A fellow, a few fellow follow-up questions were asked about the Ascenders, and then the meeting moved on. We need to re- reconsider our supply lines from Eastern Sesclar and Etril. I think that's how you said. One of the um, analysts said before launching into a report on the amount of food our territory was consuming versus the amount produced and smuggled and smuggled in. It was a concerning problem. At this rate, the larger cities will be rationing the rationing the sale of food to civilians in three weeks the smaller towns may not feel the hit for another six weeks but within two months you'll have you have people starving in the streets there are too many eyes on the coast one of sarah's strategic advisors said the last four ships that have tried to come down the coast from vecker to etrio or etrio have been caught and sunk so yeah so they're so they're definitely risking a lot with everything that they're doing um we tried expanding some of the research tunnels under um rosire or rosary um but the mana the mana uses required drew attention and we had to collapse everything we'd done and then some to prevent being used to circumvent the shields Central Dominion isn't being watched so closely, I said aloud, having the thought. The entire room turned as one to focus on me. We could route, we could route supplies to our allies there under the pretense of high blood stacking, stocking up on provisions, hedging against potential economic collapse due to the ongoing rebellion. There is a river that springs up near the border between Central Dominion and Susquehar, primarily used for shipping goods from Susquehar up to uh Cardigan or yeah, Cardigan, 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 Cardigan for distribution through the rest of the Dominion, but it is also a common destination for recreating recreation or oh, recreation among the high bloods. I'll be just as uh, thoroughly watched as the coast. Sure, surely the analyst countered. Moving resources into Central Dominion would be easy enough, but preventing them down, but but getting them down there has the same problems. Ceres was thoughtful for the, for several seconds as she considered our arguments. The network of tunnels and underground labs around um, San Derne or San Derne, um, is extensive. Began opening a supply line straight through to the base of the cliffs around the Vritra's Maw. Higher unadorned laborers for the last 10 miles or so that will limit outside detection of the digging 
The tunnel system should come out just across the sea from the river, Lady Kara mentioned. Several people hurried to take note of this command. Meanwhile, arrange for distribution of incoming food throughout our high blood allies in Central Dominion, Vecker and Itriel, or Itriel, Itriel, Itriel. Um, despite or um, devise several routes for supply lines, make it appear as if the goods are being shifted from one high blood to the next. We'll need several unaffiliated high bloods involved as well. Make sure it isn't only our allies who are suddenly stockpiling provisions. Sarah's mouth twitched in a barely visible smile. Make it clear that people are beginning to question Agrona's ability to end this rebellion. Right, get the people to not uh, trust Agrona, you know, further um, get them to uh, question him. Once again, the conversation broke down into a discussion of specifics while representatives of each group asking questions and others offering suggestions to solve new problems. This went on for nearly half an hour before Sarah dismissed everyone. People began to filter out quickly, many of them rushing off to immediately start work on the details discussed. I started toward the door as well, but Sarah caught my eye, communicating clearly that we, at least, were not done. We're not yet done. Maybe she's going to want her to go to uh, Gray now, or uh, Arthur. Maybe she's going to want her to uh, meet up with him at some point or something. Um, settling in beside Cyrus, I waited for the rest to leave. The only other person not queuing up to get out one of the doors was Wolfram. A fact I was curious about, but expected to learn the reason for it momentarily. Once the last person had left and the doors had closed behind them, Cyrus relaxed ever so slightly. She eyed Cyrus for a moment, considering the retainer before focusing on me and Wolfram. Things are coming to a head, she said, leaning one hip against the table and crossing her arms over her stomach. Word from within Tagrin Kalem is that Agrona has taken steps to prepare the legacy to attack our shield again. Cyrus stood slowly. We'll be ready if she breaches it. Cyrus raised an eyebrow a fraction of an inch. Of course we will. But there must be a counterstrike as well. It is time to change the narrative. So is it time to go on the offensive? All right, so it looks like she's trying to go on the offensive, which is actually good because it'd be nice to see them actually kind of whoop some ass and not just be on the defensive role, you know, because lately they've just been kind of, you know, kind of building up resources, getting things prepared, got the shields to make sure they're not about to invade or anything. Pretty much just buying time. They're just buying time on this, um, you know, has been their plan so far. But now they're actually about to change the narrative move things in place so i guess what she means by change the narrative is she's talking about how they're not really going to see them as a, oh they're just kind of hiding they're rebelling but they're not really doing anything so she's going to change the narrative to get people to think that like oh maybe they can actually do some damage and actually win this you know um civil war that they're kind of fighting right now so give them some more belief from the people because what a grown has been having them do is, you know, to to sow doubt and, you know, um, I guess like pain and to get them to, like I said, just using fear to get them to do what you want them to do. That's kind of been his tactic so far. But uh, let's see what she says. Um, we all waited as she let tension build. Wolfram bit his lip as his fingers twitched nervously. But Cyrus was still as, was still as a statue. We've given Gray time to put. Wait, no, but I mean, has it really been that much time? I mean, it's been a little bit of time. We've given Gray time to put his house in order. She said, meeting my eye. Now we need him. No, they about to get Gray involved. Oh no. Oh no. But he's busy trying to, you know, he's trying to power up in the relic tombs with his sister and. You know, with Micah, and then you know, does she does she know that he has um shit? Lyra is that yeah? Lyra does 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 she even know that he has Lyra with him? She probably does. All right, let's see what she says. Let me just see what she says. Okay, um, we're giving great time to put his house in order. She said, meeting my eyes. Now we need him. A de- a decisive victory in plain sight where Rona can't can't sweep it under the rug. I'm sending you to retrieve him. I just said earlier, is she going to be sending 
uh, Kara to go get Gray or to go see Gray or something like that. And that's actually what happened. That's actually what's happening right now. To, to, I, cut, I cut myself off looking uh, pointedly at Wolfram. Sarah's nodded. It's all right, Kara. Wolfram can... Wait. Wolfram is going to go get him? Okay. I mean... Okay. Maybe she has other plans for Kara, I guess. All right. Okay, so I, I, I kind of jumped the boat on that one. Like, she's sending Wolfram. Okay. Maybe it's like a... Uh, like a like a like another reason behind it. Like maybe she wants to gauge if Arthur trusts him, and if he doesn't, that's gonna let her know that he's a. Tra- I don't know. You know, like maybe there's another play to it. But okay, Sarah's not it. Um, it's all right, Kara. Wolfram can be trusted. He's one of mine. I experienced a moment of confusion then because she wants to see Greg. She wants to see um, Arthur again. But then, but my brow shot, uh, shoot up. Another Vritra born protege? He smiled awkwardly. What? She's got another one? Lady, Lady Sarah's helped me when everyone else gave up on me. When my v- Vritra blood didn't manifest, well, I owe her a lot. Oh, so she's got another high blood in her pocket. Man, she has. She has things planned all out, man. So maybe that's what Kara was the entire time. Just another another tool that can she can I mean a tool is a is a is a strong word, but like another person that can be used to help uh use is also a strong word, but she is kind of being used to help her fulfill her goals, right? Um why didn't you tell me? I asked my mentor, unsure how I felt about this revelation. What, you thought you were the only one that was special? You thought you were special, Kara? You thought you were the only one she cared about? That she had, you know, plans for? Not the only one. Shit, you find out later on that she actually helped Malis too. <laughs> it was essential that my connection with the Redwater blood be kept entirely secret, she said. No hint of apology or even an acknowledgement in her tone. Only Cyrus was aware. I hope you'll need no further assurances. Right, you're already this deep. Like, are you about to question, like, her... I, I, I don't know. Anyway, straight. I straightened, suddenly conscious of how I was still looking at Wolfram. I was, it was difficult to imagine the painfully antisocial boy I'd known who had turned into the jittery man before me being mentored by Cyrus. If he had gone through the same sort of training and preparation I had, however, then there had to be a lot more to him than I ever expected or suspected. Yeah, he's not. He's not a chump. Shit, he's probably stronger than you. <laughs> you know, you never know. Um, at the very least, he possessed a hidden strength that I appreciated. Good, Sarah said after a moment. Because he's coming with you to that cave. Oh man, no way! So wait, why is she sending both? Why is she sending both? She's sending both of them to that cave. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just keep reading. Wolfram Pale to, to the other continent. <laughs> I sent the team ahead. To ready my personal long range Tempest Warp. Gray, Arthur, is based out of the underground city of Vodoriel. The doors were heavily divided by the war in Dicathan, and tension will still likely be high there. Do not expect a warm welcome. If Arthur isn't there, you may also speak to Virian Aerolith. The Lances? The she literally got all this planned out. Who did she talk to? She said that. I sent the team ahead to ready my personal lo- So she has her own personal lawn. Lo- Wait, that's probably the same Tempest Warp that she used to get to Vodorio the first time back when Arthur just got done fighting the uh, the poison chick. And he was like, yeah, I think it was, right? And then he was running, he was trying to get back. And then they like went and found out that, you know, they were traitors and it was the one that let them in and stuff like that. Okay, so that was probably, that's probably what it was. Okay. Um, so she sent her own team 
to ready her personal Lone Range Tempest War. Gray is based out of the underground city of Adorio. The doors were heavily divided by the war in Dicathan, and tension will still be likely high there. Um, do not expect a warm welcome. If Arthur isn't there, you may also speak to Virian Aerolith, the Lance's Byron Wikes, Veray, or Veray, I don't even, what, how do you say her, name, her last name? Are, Ara, or Micah Earthborn, or whichever Dwarven clan is in charge of the city itself. Wolfram's wide eyes turn to me. This is going to be exciting for to finally see Kara interaction with um with Arthur's people. Um, Wolfram's wide eyes turn to me. His mouth sl- opens slightly. It seems Sarah's alternate protege was feeling somewhat overwhelmed. I need Arthur Gray to return to Alacria soon. Sarah's continued. He is singularly focused on the protection of his family and i worry that now that he has finally returned home he may not be eager to leave again convince him (laughs) he already left (laughs) he already left bro um i set my jaw of course cyceris i trust him i couldn't help but ask myself if that was true causing me to trail off immediately I added I trust that he'll do what is right Sarah's pushed away from the table and headed for the same door she had entered through come on then you'll take a tempest work to the ocean side where a member of the forward party will meet you she hesitated then added for what is worth Kara I trust him too <laughs> well that's new um Wolfram and I followed Sarah's heel, leaving the silent and brooding Cyrus behind. The research center's primary Tempest warp chamber was tucked away between several offices and protected by a guard station. At, at word from Sarah's, the operator programmed the device and stepped back. Remember what we've put the Dicathians through when you arrive in Vodorio, Sarah. Look at this, man. The empathy. The empathy. The empathy. Um, remember what we've put the Dicathians through when you arrive in Vildorio, Sarah said as we stepped up in front of the map. So she's about to warp now. Are we going to get like a little bit of, you know, her journey there or something like that? That'd be cool if we do. Um, be patient with their, ho- ho- yeah, be patient with their hostility. You will find, given a chance, that they aren't the barbaric failed continent Agrona has, paint- has painted them as. And I believe it is important that they learn to see Alacria not as their aggressor, but as an equal victim to the Asura's plotting. I understand, I answered, and Wolfram repeated, then go. The operator activated the Tempest work, and I felt the magic grab hold of me, pulling me through space. In only seconds, we were deposited in a small bunker. A young woman in olive leather armor jumped off, jumped up off the stool she'd been lounging on and snapped the salute. Her gaze flickered to Wolfram before um, settling back on me. Lady Kara, madam, the long range warp is set up. Oh, so they got, so they got transported to somewhere near the long range uh, warp. What if it doesn't warp them there and it warps them somewhere else because a grown has some other shit that he was doing? I don't know. Just more twists that can be thrown in. Uh, the long range warp is set up just on the other side of the shield. Follow me, please. And then she was moving. Wolfram and I followed her out of the steel door and down a steep, rocky path that led toward the coast, perhaps half a mile away and a couple hundred feet below. The base of the shield was just visible where it curved down out of the sky to sink into the sand and stone of a rocky beach. I recognized it as the northwestern coastline of Sesclar. So, you've been quite central to Sarah's operation here, haven't you? When I looked at Wolfram, he responded with a stiff smile, and I realized he was trying to make small talk. Aside from the short meeting with High Lord Frost and the others, I hadn't seen Wolfram in a few years. Not since my adopted mother and father stopped forcing me to go to parties with the other richer blooded fosters. As children, our relationship had been amicable, but I had never formed close bonds with any of the other richer bloods. I agree with what she's doing, 
I answer after a moment. Yes, but she trusts you, clearly. You seem to be involved in all her decision making. I laughed despite myself, but there was no humor in it. Not all, apparently. You're angry? I bit my tongue, immediately feeling guilty. I knew she's jealous. That's all it is. She's she's envious. She thought she was special. That's all. Immediately feeling guilty. I knew all too well how difficult Wolfram's life had been and how he had been treated by the others like us. I apologize. I'm not really just your relationship with Sarah's took me by surprise is all his brows pinched together in a serious expression. She is good at compartmentalizing. It's interesting, you know. What's that? I asked, hopping down a steep step as I carefully followed after the soldier. The way she thinks, plans, and executes. Lessons taken directly from the high sovereign. But she is using her own tools against him. It's almost poetic. That's an interesting, interesting way to put it. Um, I stopped and looked over my shoulder at Wolfram, who had, been, who had fallen behind me as the trail down the steep slope narrowed. There was a strange, almost wistful look on his face. I hope this motherfucker ain't a traitor, bruh. Come on. It's only a bit of a hike still, and our window through the shield is scheduled for... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm expecting something to happen, yo. We got dots. We got dots. Our guy shaded her eyes with her hand and looked towards the sun. Shit. Only about seven or eight minutes. It only lasts 30 seconds, so we need to hoof it. She began hurrying down the slope, occasionally sliding on loose stones or stepping or leaping over the edge of several foot trap or foot drops. I hurried after her, listening to Wolfram's steps behind me to make sure he was keeping up. He'd never been very graceful. The rocky hill plummeted straight down into a cliff before joining the beach, and our guy led us up, led us into a, a series of step stones of steep. Steep stone? Yeah, steep stones. St- steep stone steps. <laughs> that was hard to say. Uh, cut into the cliffside. So, what should I expect on meeting this Ascender Gray or Lance Arthur Lewin of Dicathan? Sounds like you know him well. As I took a sharp, yeah, as I took a sharp uh, switchback, I glanced up at Wolfram again. He was staring down at me, and there was and there was an intensity in his mismatched eyes that didn't match his tone. He's difficult to describe, I said, growing uncomfortable. You understand once you've once you've met him. I realized that this discomfort had been building in me as we descended the hillside, but not understanding what I was feeling, I had pushed it back. I had pushed it to the back of my mind. This discomfort was building in her, she says. Discomfort building in her. discomfort building maybe she's like hmm, nervous maybe she's nervous I considered everything as I've been trained to do moving backwards from this last question from this last question up the hill searching for subconscious details that had triggered my unease my heel turned on a loose stone and I slid down two steps I planted my hand to catch myself at the same time Wolfram's fist closed around my arm to stabilize me. Something silver tumbled out of my sleeve, bounced off the hard stone, and went spiraling down the cliff. Vanish- Is that the egg? Vanishing in the rugged bushes that lined the beach's uh, edge of the bottom. I curse. That looked valuable, Wolfram noted, helping me back to my feet. It was. I muttered unhappily. No time to search for it. Wow. So she literally just dropped the egg that that Nico gave to her to give to Arthur. How is she just, how is she just gonna drop it like that? Something silver stumbled out of my sleeve, bounced off the hard stone, and went spiraling down the cliffside, vanishing in the rugged bushes that want that's fucked up. That looked valuable, Wolfram noted, helping me back to my feet. It was, I muttered unhappily. No time to say, why wasn't it in like a zip pocket or or her dimension ring or something? That don't even make sense. No time to search for it, the soldier said from below, shaking her head. Unless you want to explain to Cypheris why we missed our window. 
I only shook my head and went on in silence for a minute or so. I was thinking, you've you've been training to fight with Saris, right? I asked, breaking the silence as I realized what had been bothering me. Your footing is much more stable than I remember. Those dances we were all forced to attend. I oh wait wait wait, wait. maybe that's what's making him her uneasy. Hold on, oh she's trying to get at something. You've been training to fight with Saris, right? So Saris has been training him to fight. I asked, breaking the silence as I realized what had been bothering me. Your footing is much more stable than I remember. Meaning, he, he has, his, his footing is much more stable than I remember. Like, he's, like, he has more balance, like, more core strength? That type of thing? Those dances, we were all forced to attend. So what, his footing was very clumsy when they were dancing? I met his eye over my shoulder, forcing a clumsy, half-suppressed smile to my lips. You've changed. The nervous act is just that, isn't it? A masquerade. So he's acting. Because he's... And she notices because he's not as clumsy as he used to be. So he's more confident than he portrays. He shrugged as he straightened his shoulders, but he didn't miss a step. It's not so different from your role with the Denoris, is it? So this motherfucker is like stepping back, like "Mm, it's not so different from what you do with the Denoris, is it? People expect you to be something and Ceres has taught you to show them what they want to see, exactly. If anyone ever thinks of me at all, they remember the clumsy, terrified, young, vritra blooded boy who managed to embarrass himself at every turn. And this is exactly what it goes when they say the whole saying of uh, if you have low expectations, you end up you end up uh, catching yourself off guard because you don't really expect for anything crazy to happen. You know, it's like you're fighting somebody and you underestimate them and then they end up you end up losing. They expect me to be just that. So convincing them, I... So convincing them, I am... So convincing them, I am, has been all too easy. Sarah's taught me that there is power in underestimation. I let out a breath, relaxing as I reminded myself that we had both undergone the same training from a scythe. I was suddenly glad that Sarah's had sent Wolfram along and curious about what he was capable of. When I opened my mouth to ask about his training, though, I was cut off by another curse from our guy. What the fuck is going on with this guy? Like, this guy is, like, not prepared at all. The soldier jumped off the last set of, set of steps and plummeted, plummeting 15 feet down to the sand below, where she landed with a grunt. Then she was up and moving, jogging across the beach and waving us after her. See those, see those, uh, sturations? I guess I say it. It's time. We're already late. There were lines like stretch marks running vertically down the shield. Outside of it on an outcropping of rock that broke the otherwise smooth stretch of sand and water, several people were waiting for us. Our guy was kicking up sprays of wet sand as she ran across the beach toward the spot where the lines covered, uh, converged on the ground. Empowering my legs with mana, I leapt off the cliffside, clearing 20 feet of air before landing softly, my boots sinking into the sand. Wolfram landed beside me a moment later, and we both hurried to follow the soldier. The shield split apart with a low electrical hum, creating an opening 10 feet wide and 15 feet high. There was a flash of green light. A bolt of mana lifted our guide up off her feet and flung her back at me, reacting, hold on, a bolt of messy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking something about to happen. I saw dots that 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 one time, and I'm just like, something's happening, bro. So I think it might be happening now. A, there was a flash of green light. A bolt of mana lifted our guide up off her feet and flung her back at me. Reacting on pure instinct, I caught her. But in the second it took me to do so, several more spells were fired off. Half of the group waiting behind the shielded the shield collapsed as as bullets of fire raining down, raining acid took them unaware. It was over before it even began. 
So the people that she was meeting up with, they literally got bombarded with spells, it seems like. And they got their ass just destroyed. It was over. So the second that it took her to catch her, several more spells were fired off. Half of the group waiting behind the shield collapsed as bullets of fire and raining acid took them out. Are these fire and raining acid? Are these the wraiths? Could these possibly be the wraiths? Or maybe it could be some retainers. I don't know. Beyond the shield. Or maybe it could be, was it, Moir? Beyond the shield collapsed as bullets and fire raining as it took them unaware. It was over before it even began. The young soldier was squirming in my arms, trying to twist around enough to look over her shoulder at me. Her eyes were wide, her breath coming in quick, shallow gasp. The attackers were already hurrying to the gap in the shield. Wolfram was standing just at my side, almost touching me, but he wasn't watching the mages who had stopped at the gap and started throwing down what looked like components of an artifact of some kind. He was watching me. What? It'd be better if you don't fight back. Remember, he is a fucking traitor, man! No! We prefer to bring you in unharmed, he said. His voice completely changing as the intensity in his eyes turned into a dark confidence. I was, I was suspicious of this guy, but masquerading the, uh, the, 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 oh no, the, man, this is so fucked up. I'd, it'd be better if you don't fight back. We prefer to bring you in unharmed, he said. His voice completely changing as the intensity in his eyes turned into a dark confidence. I know you're calculating your eyes of victory right now, but Wolfram expanded outward, growing taller and more muscle. Onyx horns sprouted from his head, short and sharp. Let me assure you, a battle can only result in your injury or death. I stepped away from him, still cradling the soldier in my arms. A red stain was growing over her left side. His vitriol blooded blood manifested, but he's been hiding it like me. Underneath the shield opening. But Sarah's literally said that she trusted him. But I told you before, maybe she did this to try to see if he was actually loyal and wanted to know what Gray thought, or I keep saying, Arthur thought of him, but she's always so calculated. Did she not see this coming? So, underneath the shield opening, the mages, each of whom wore an emblem symbolizing a winding red river, had set up an arch of black metal rods. High above them, the streaks in the shield were wiped away as the 30-second time frame passed. When the streaks were gone, the shield flexed around the artifact. The two forces conflicted, ensuing, issuing a ringing buzz, but the gap didn't close. I needed time to think. There was no way for me to know how strong Wolfram was, and I was outnumbered seven to one, so I couldn't be sure of the results of a fight. I needed to understand more about what they were trying to accomplish. How long have you been a traitor? Wolfram was stalking toward me slowly, but he paused to consider the question. I was never Ceres's or Ceres's regardless of what she says. Besides, if you betray a rebellion, doesn't that make you loyal? I mean, that makes you a... A double agent. It makes you two faced. It makes you a snake. One of the red water soldiers ran up with a pair of manacles clinging in his hands. Wolfram took them by the chain, holding them up. This is pre- mana suppression cups. Mana suppression cups. It's ironic, of course, that Ceres gave me all the tools I needed to spy on her. He went on, jangling the manacles. Everyone thinks she's the clever one, but even she never suspected that my blood manifested. Ships coming round the bend, one of the red water mages shouted. 
He was standing atop the rocky outcrop with spyglass pressed against his eyes. Five minutes. Wolfram took a step toward me. Here, let's get these on you. I hate for you to be tempted to do something stupid when Scythe Drogoff gets here. Silently apologizing to the soldier in my arms, I dropped her. Wolfram lunged at me, reaching for my wrist, but I threw myself into a backwards roll, drawing my blade from my dimension ring as I came back to my feet. But Wolfram was fast, and he was still right on top of me. His fist drove down like a club, wrapped in, wrapped in a stable flames to smash my blade out of the way. I pivoted around the blow, absorbing the shift and momentum from his strike to bring my sword around in a wide arc toward the back of his legs. So, okay, so in this situation, she can't let herself get captured. She can't let herself get captured. She knows too much about Gray, Arthur. God damn, I keep on saying Gray. She knows too much about Arthur. She knows, she, she's, she's trusted and valued too much by Ceres. And we don't want her to be captured, period, because we want her to meet back up with Arthur and have them be happily ever after. So, she has to get out of this somehow before Dragoth gets there. Because once Dragoth gets there, it's, it's a wrap. Unless Ceres knows this is all happening, she shows up too. And now it's a fight between Ceres and Dragoth and Kara and uh, 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 Wolfram. So yeah, so uh, momentum and his strike to bring my sword around in a wide arc around the back of his legs. He launched himself into the air, his large frame rotating a graceful backflip as he landed a few feet away. I felt the mages at my back beginning to conjure spells. As much as fighting back is not the right call, Kara, I'm curious to see what you're capable of, Wolfram said with an air of confident curiosity. Cyrus has so much faith in you. Spinning the manacles over his head, he hurled them at me. They flew like a bola whir whirling around and around. I set my feet as best I could in the sand, ready to dodge or deflect the wild throw. The air around me hardened, congelating into an up, 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 I can't, fuck, I, I've heard this word before. Obfuscating snarl of jet black wind that blinded and restrained me. Void wind, I thought feebly as the manacles guided by his magic snapped closed around my wrist before pulling my hands together in front of me. She was done in that quickly? God damn. The queasing sensation of my mana being snuffed out filled every cell of my body as the cuffs locked it inside me. Wow. Wow. I'm thinking she about to fight him toe to toe, figure out how not to get captured. She gets captured that quick. That's a shame. That's a shame, man. He literally said, I wonder, you know, how, what you can actually do. She has so much faith in you. And then he just sends those cuffs with some void wind and the air um, thickens up around her. And then boom, it's over. Okay. So I'm thinking that site, I'm thinking, and I, I, I kind of got my question for you guys too. I'm thinking that Ceres knows that he's a traitor or suspected him to be one, which is the reason why she changed plans or she made this whole thing of how he's going with her to get Arthur, right? Because why not just send Kara? She sent Wolfram with her for a reason. So I'm believing that she knows or suspects or suspects that she has some sort of other preparations planned out. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm thinking that she probably knew that his blood manifested. But how was he able to suppress his manifestation of his blood without an artifact like how Kara does? Unless he does have an artifact and Sarah just wasn't aware of it. I just don't think that she's just caught off guard by this and that. She's too, she's too, she's too smart. Sarah's is just too smart to get, like, there, there's no way. There's no way. I don't think so. So, this, this was, uh, 
unforeseen circumstances. I mean, I kind of was like, uh, maybe he might be a traitor. She's talking about how he, you know, he's not as clumsy and I don't know. And she had this uneasy feeling and stuff. And I'm just like, okay, maybe there's something to be worried about here. And then it was like, oh, you know, I'm just good at masquerading and being underestimated because it's easier that way. And she taught me a lot of stuff and there's power in being under, you know, underestimated. And then it's kind of like, oh, wow, I'm glad that you're with me. You know, how strong are you? That type of thing. And it kind of got easy. It's kind of like, oh, okay, he might be, he might be good. You know, this might be cool. You know, another protege that Sarah's was helping out. But then this motherfucker's a traitor. And so it's just like, there's no way Sarah's didn't know this. There's no way. So, but yeah, this was, the, this is great, man. This is the, uh, this is a very entertaining chapter. They about to try to get Gray, Arthur. Fuck, I keep saying that. And, uh, yeah, this is dope. This is dope. So my question for you guys, which I'm going to put in the community is this. Do you believe that Sarah's knew that he was a traitor and that she knew that his blood manifested? Maybe she didn't know his blood manifested. Maybe she did. I don't know. But really, do you, do you think that she knew that, uh, Wolfram was a, was a traitor and that she had some sort of plan planned out was the reason why she, insisted that he went with her it has to be it has to be so i'm in support she knew about this she either knew or suspected it and she got something planned for this that's what i'm thinking but anyway you made it this far i appreciate you guys watching the video like subscribe check you guys out for the review peace